my friends hello hi how are you I hope you guys are having an amazing day today hello I know that I am sweating because it's super hot here hi how is everyone so today's video is one that I can't really be like oh I'm so excited to make this um, because it's against a brand that I have always just like ride or died with like I've always 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 loved Anastasia Beverly Hills they have always been one of my favorite brands one of my very first things I ever got in makeup was an Anastasia Beverly Hills glow kit they were like the first brand I ever heard about when I got into makeup so I just want to make it very clear that I don't take like joy in having to talk about this it sucks but as consumers, and I think if you've watched my channel a while, you might know this, I am a firm believer in it is okay to be a consumer. We all kind of have to be consumers. We live in a capitalist society, but it is very important to be a smart consumer. So I am in no way trying to be like, you cannot shop from Anastasia Beverly Hills. You must be with me and cancel them and all of that. But I will say, I think it's really important to know who we're shopping from, who we're supporting, what's going on inside businesses that we support, um, and kind of so on and so forth. This is kind of going to be a follow-up to my first video that I made on this topic. I believe I made that video. I don't know when I made that video. I basically made a video seven months ago titled The Fall of Anastasia Beverly Hills and in that video I talked about how I felt from a consumer standpoint they were falling off. It was at a time when they were releasing a ton of launches. People were very overwhelmed with the amount of launches. They had just done some things that were a little bit shady in regards to releasing the North Vina palettes. Shady in my opinion. Some people didn't think so, but I thought it was a little shady. And I also talked at length about their PR list and kind of what happened, what was going on with the PR list search and everything like that. And I talked a lot about all of those things. And since I made that video, a lot of things have happened that have definitely solidified for me that I don't think I'm going to be supporting the brand as it stands now because too many shady things are coming out. Too many people are coming forward with stories that just show show something is not okay <laughs> internally with the brand. This isn't even about the products they're putting out and I want to talk about it. So the first thing I do want to talk about is the PR list and I know this is a little bit of like old tea but <laughs> I still think it's important to talk about. It's something to mention. So in my last video where I discussed this I talked about the PR search that they did. Basically Norvina tweeted out that if you wanted to be on the ABH PR list to tweet her your looks and she would consider putting you on the PR list. She was going to be searching for people. I think she said she was going to put like 200 names on or something like that and it became a frenzy. I for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks just saw so many people begging to be on the ABHPR list, pleading for Norvina to notice them. They would make looks inspired by Norvina. They would make looks using only ABH stuff for weeks and weeks on end. There, the, the hashtag the list was all I saw on my Twitter timeline and if you followed a lot of smaller MUAs who weren't already on the list. Or Twitter and Instagram probably looked very similar. And it got to a point where honestly people were annoyed. It was an annoyance at the artist because obviously it's an opportunity, shoot your shot. I can understand how getting on the ABH PR list would seem like a very monumental thing for a smaller artist. Like that is huge, you know? Getting products before they come out, being able to create looks with them, being able to review before them. PR is not just getting free makeup for influencers. I'm sure for some people it is, but for a lot of influencers, it's a leg up in, in the competition of of the beauty world. You're getting that palette before anybody else so you can create exclusive content with that palette and get your review up before other people. That's like the benefit of PR for influencers. But it became very obvious, at least to me, and I feel like a lot of other people, that Norvina was really using this list, this hunt, as a way to get people to constantly be tweeting about ABH, to be constantly tweeting about the palettes they own, to be constantly tweeting about wanting to be on the PR list. Like, they were using this as a marketing technique and it was so so effective that other brands, BH Cosmetics, Milk Makeup, like so many other brands started publicly doing the list. <laughs> Get on the list, tweet us your looks, and it created hype for the brand, which isn't necessarily bad marketing. However, this is the problem I have now. So after about a year of everything going on with the list, and she added like, I think she said at one point she added 500 or 600 names. It might have even been more. She said she added like hundreds and hundreds of names to this PR list. I saw so many of my mutuals being so excited because they made it on the list. I equally saw so many of my mutuals being 
destroyed that they didn't make it on the list. In the small beauty community, it almost became like a status symbol or like, are you on the list? I remember I went to Chicago to shoot for my palette with Midas and I had Carlos there who I love. He's, I'm gonna link his uh, Instagram down below. He's great. He did my lip swatches. He was my model for the lip swatches. But I remember him telling me he, he got on the list and I was like, oh my God. Like even I knew how crazy that was that he got on the list. I thought that was so cool. So everybody was getting sent all of this PR, all of this stuff, right? And the problem was about a year later, Norvina, without telling anybody, and I guess it was also her PR person, without alerting anybody really, um, a bunch of people kind of just got mass taken off the list. Um, people I knew, mutuals I knew got taken off of the list and all these things. And honestly, like that happens. Brands will say they're going to send you stuff and then they don't, or they send you stuff for a little while and then they don't. There's a lot of reasons that people get taken off of PR lists. That in and of itself is not super problematic in my opinion. Problematic. But I will say when it's coming from Anastasia, who made this huge deal about their PR list, who made it this huge cultural like movement you know that meme that's like it was a cultural reset like that was the abh pr list for a long time they made so much probably money that's so much free promotion from all of these influencers who were just begging to get free makeup from them that to then turn around and a year later kick most of them from what i saw off of the pr list after they made their money off of them after they heavily promoted the products because they were so thankful to be on the list in the first place it does feel a bit shady that you turned around and kicked so many of them off. It, it does feel a little disingenuous to have a PR search where you brag about having one of the biggest PR searches in the industry, where you brag about not caring about the size or the following or what the person could bring ABH. You just care about the artistry because that's what she was saying during the PR search. You say all of that and then you kick small creators off of the list. So this was my first red flag was when she did that. And I was like, granted, every company is entitled to kick somebody off that's the influencer game like it happens but it didn't sit right with me that she used all of those influencers and used the momentum of the list to promote and make her company seem bigger and better than all of these other brands who were just caring about numbers that was like the whole focus it didn't sit right with me that she then turned around and with no communication kicked all of these people off the list and then if people who were upset that they got kicked off talked about it on social media they were just attacked by abh stands and all of that so that didn't sit right with me that was number one and now even more has come out a lot of information put out on Glassdoor and I'll leave some screenshots right here I left room <laughs> for screenshots but there's a lot of Glassdoor reviews coming out that were painting Anastasia in a very bad light um, and it was multiple people leaving multiple different reviews and all of them had similar experiences so if this was just like one person saying this stuff I wouldn't be like oh gotcha but it was multiple people sharing multiple experiences some of what they said which one of the weirder ones to me this is just weird was that they base their business dealings on astrological signs and astrological readings so for example if mercury is in retrograde um they won't like partake in a business deal or launch things they basically scope out their entire year based on astrological stuff which is and honestly i know some people really believe in that stuff but to base your company around that just is incredibly unprofessional in my opinion. They also were saying that uh, Norvina hires people based on appearances and how they look, didn't hire certain people because she thought they were too pretty, and then she did hire people and then specifically told them I won't hire pretty people, which is a huge slap in the face. They also said she's incredibly unprofessional and difficult to work with, uh, that she really only hires men, just a lot of different things like that. And Norvina's response to this was that sh the girl who had written the review, one of the girls, was an ex-girlfriend of the guy she's currently dating. She had been an ex-girlfriend, like, they were, they dated in high school. And so that's why she was leaving this bad review. And she had hired her out of the goodness of her heart, but, like, she was leaving this bad, bad review because she dated her boyfriend, her current boyfriend in high school. That's so weird. What a weird way to de deflect criticism. Like, what a weird way to be like, oh, she dated my boyfriend 
15 years ago. So that means she must be out to get me and my company now. What a strange, strange way to defend something. And then she also basically said the other girl that was saying this was a liar. And that girl publicly tweeted at her and was like, I am not lying. You told me to my face that you don't hire pretty people because you don't want it to distract from the boys. And everything I said in my review is true. So I saw all of this and I was like, well, that's super, super weird. And overall on Glassdoor, I think it's important to note they only have like a 2.4 star rating, which is really bad. That's <laughs> a lot of, out of 71 reviews, a lot of people have to leave you a bad rating to get to a 2.4 approval rating. So all of that was also really weird. And, and I'm starting to see things about Anastasia and I'm just like, this is really weird. It's weird that there's so many accusations of the CEO being not a great person. It's weird that she did this whole piece PR thing and now she took everybody off. It's weird that she was shutting down and kind of dissing smaller creators who were upset about being taken off of the PR list. Everything around them just felt weird. A creator who I followed for a long time named Taj Reed basically posted her entire story and experience with Anastasia Beverly Hills on her Instagram. I didn't know that Taj had talked about this earlier in the year on her Instagram stories. I don't, I hadn't seen that. So this was the first time I'd really heard her speaking out against ABH. But I did remember that back in, I believe, October of 2019, I remember Norvina announcing that Taj was going to be ABH's first ever content creator. Creator. And I didn't really know what that meant, but I was like, oh, good for her, because I love her makeup. I think she does a great job. I follow her on TikTok. I was like, I'm going to link Taj below. I love her. And I was like, Taj is great. Like, that's fantastic. Really happy for her. She's super talented. So I saw that, and then it kind of just left my mind. Never thought about it again until I saw this. So Taj posted her entire statement regarding everything. I will absolutely put screenshots here if you want to pause and read. I don't want to read the entire statement because it is very long, but I will say the brief summary of it is basically that Tosh had talked to Jackie Ina about needing work and kind of put out feelers of if there were any brands that were kind of looking for content creators or looking for people to work full time. And Jackie Ina put in a good word for her with Anastasia Beverly Hills. Norvina reached out to her and Tosh made it very clear that she wanted full time work. She was looking to be paid this amount per post. She said her rate was, I believe, $970 per post, so about $1,000 a post, which given her size, I think it's really reasonable. She has just over 100,000 on Instagram, and her engagement is really great, so I don't think that's unreasonable. She said Norvina agreed to those terms, agreed to $1,000 a post, and also agreed to give her a full-time job. Um, and so she announced that right around Halloween, which is when I saw it, and then behind the scenes, a lot of stuff went down. Taj was supposed to be communicating with people from ABH to get a contract in order and the contract that they initially tried to offer her was $1,000 a week for two posts. So right off the bat, she disregarded the rate that she gave them and they cut it in half. So basically, if she would post two posts a week for $1,000, she'd only be getting paid $500 a post. Still a decent amount of money, but for her engagement, she deserves more. But she basically said she agreed to it because that was still $1,000 a week. That's still a lot of money just to have to post two things. So she agreed to it and she figured she'd work it out later. As time went on, it became clear that things were not moving along with ABH. She also mentioned the fact that some Somebody told her that they couldn't process the deal because Mercury was in retrograde, which is so nuts to me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, then she basically went on to talk about how she kept trying to work out this deal and they kept nickel and diming her. She created content for them over Christmas and they weren't paying her for it. They wouldn't give her a contract and then eventually it became clear to her that what they were trying to offer her was a contract to create four pieces of content for a thousand dollars. So now they've chopped up her deal into quarters and they're not giving her full-time work. They're not giving her a full-time job as a content creator. They're paying her for four posts, $1,000 flat fee done. She said at this point she was really frustrated, but they basically told her that she would not get paid for her other work if she didn't sign this contract. So she felt really manipulated and really pushed into it, but she did sign the contract because she needed the money. Later down the line, she said she finally was able to speak to Norvina and Norvina told her that she was going to make changes. She was going to help her and then Norvina never did. Norvina later claimed that she was not in charge of creating deals with influencers and so she felt like she needed to step away from that situation and like not get involved in it because she wasn't really in charge of it. Um, however, she initiated the deal with Taj. She's the one who started the whole thing so if you're gonna back out and end it because you don't want to deal with it, don't send your little minions to do that. Have the respect for the 
creator that you're screwing over and tell her to her face that that's what you're doing. It basically ended with Taj really just kind of being screwed. I think there's a lot of frustrating aspects to this. I think there's a lot of moving pieces, but I think what's really frustrating to me is ABH has the money to pay people for content. They make millions and millions and millions of dollars a year. They, they're they not like an, in, they're not a small indie company who's like just starting out. They have money to pay content creators, but they're resorting to nickel and diming small creators who specifically expressed that they needed cash and needed a full-time job, manipulating them into creating content for them that they're not going to pay them their full rate for, knowing that they're doing that because there's evidence of it, and also doing things like what I mentioned before with the PR list, where they tr got people to post all of this free content for them in exchange for a, a PR box that cost them nothing to send in reality. Taj also went on to say that Norvina did reach out to her after she posted that Instagram, and it basically Norvina said in that, you signed the contract, which she was manipulated into doing so. I don't know how that's not obvious, how like a massive brand is threatening not to give you your money if you don't sign this contract. And Taj also made the claim that ABH has made people start signing NDAs in order to work for them or work with them. Um, I don't know if that's true, but I believe her. <laughs> I think she has a real ring of truth around her that I just kind of believe what she's saying. And also Norvina didn't deny that in the text messages. She showed text messages between Norvina. Norvina basically was like, if you want to work with ABH, like we'll take care of you. Um, but it was pretty obvious that that would not be a comfortable work environment for her. Pretty obvious that that would be kind of hostile for her. So she has basically cut all ties with ABH now, is not going to work with them anymore. And it's just basically said I'm done with it. I'm really happy to see Taj getting so much support from the community, so much support from people echoing her experiences. Cause now we're seeing more and more people come forward saying I had a similar experience with them. They did something shady with my payment too. Like we're seeing more and more things come forward about this and it just doesn't sit right with me. I don't know. Something about a brand that's like a multi-million dollar brand not paying creators what they're worth when they so easily could. Trying to tell the beauty community that they don't care about numbers. They'll support anyone just for the artistry. It doesn't sit right with me. And this on top of the way I feel based on my first video, they have been putting out products in a way that is a little bit shady. On top of all of that, I'm just done. And frankly, I've seen so many people echoing what I'm saying. People are just kind of over it with ABH. I have never seen a brand go from so highly regarded to just absolutely like people make jokes on at the expense of Anastasia all the time now. And frankly, most of it has to do with Norvina. The root of a lot of these problems with Anastasia Beverly Hills does seem to be Norvina. People have issues with her. People have issues with the products that she's putting her name on. And I talked about this briefly in my other video, but I do think that in a way Norvina wants to be an influencer in her own right. You don't put your name on a palette. You don't put your face in the Ulta like display for your own palette. You don't create an entire subsection of a brand of Anastasia and call it the Norvina section if you don't in your own right want to be somewhat of an influencer. So what comes along with that is you are now being held personally responsible and accountable for what happens because your name and your face and your likeness is now a major part of the brand. I personally can't support a major part of the brand like Norvina. I personally just can't support that. All of the things I'm hearing, all of the things that are being said, I can't support it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you can't. I think it's important to know who's in charge of these companies and what they are doing behind the scenes. I don't know. I'm going to be really interested to hear what you guys have to say because I, I don't know. I don't know where to stand on them anymore, but I think I'm just over it. There's so many other brands now that are good. It's like you don't need to support a brand where the owner is doing things that are very obviously really shady and not supporting people actually. <laughs> she also got a fight. This is a complete side tangent, but she also got a fight with Neon MUA, who is a fantastic artist on Twitter and Instagram. 10 out of 10, we'll link him down below too. But she got in a fight with him trying to say that her brand was inclusive when he as a black man in makeup was saying it's not inclusive. I don't find your makeup to be inclusive and she was trying to argue with him, the person who would be using it, that it was instead of just listening to his voice and saying yeah you would probably know better than me as a black man you would probably know better than me a white woman what inclusivity means. I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, that's it for me, you guys. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. That's right. You can click on that link. You can register to vote. And you can be part of your democracy. It's super fun to do. Along with that will be my little social justice corner where I talk about petitions that you should sign, places to donate, just things that I think are really important. I've had Brianna Taylor down there for a long time and that's really just because I'm pissed about that whole situation. So if you want to read about it, if you want to learn about it, that is down below. Um, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!